Hey, what's going on guys? So in this video, what I want to do is something that very few Amazon FBA gurus will actually do, and that's to show you my real Amazon FBA numbers for last month. Now, I'm not just talking about my revenue, I'm talking about pulling back the curtain and giving you a full breakdown of my revenue, all of my expenses and costs, and then if you stick around to the end of the video, my actual profit and profit margins last month. And the reason why I wanna do this is because online, so many gurus talk about how much revenue they generate, how much revenue their students generate, but they very rarely talk about profit and profit margins. And when they do, those profit margins are often unrealistically high. So my aim with this video is to, by basically by showing you an honest insight into my numbers, hopefully that's gonna allow you to have more realistic expectations of what you can achieve with Amazon FBA. So without further ado, let's get straight into it. Let's go into the computer and I'll show you my revenue for last month. Okay, so if we jump into my Seller Central account and come over to my FBA dashboard, um, I'm just gonna select the first till the 31st of December so we can look at the whole month. You can see that I generated 27,841 pounds on Amazon last month in revenue. So now that we know that revenue number, let's look at some of the costs. But before we do that, I wanna ask you to let me know in the comment section below how much profit you think I made on that 27,841 pounds, because I'm really interested to see how close you guys get to the actual profit that I generated. And then at the end of the video, you can also find out how close you were. So let me know in the comment section down below. The first cost we need to talk about because I am a VAT registered business is VAT. So the way that we work out this number is we take my ink fat revenue, which was 27,841 pounds, and we divide that by 1.2, which is gonna give my ex fat revenue, which is 23,201 pounds. And then we minus those numbers from each other, and then we get my VAT bill for last month, which was 4,640 pounds, which is a huge amount and is so painful. But the way you've got to look at it is that with VAT, it's never really yours, you're just collecting it for HMRC. So that takes the sting off a little bit, but it is a very high number. But that's really the way you've got to look at it. Now we have my XVAT uh, revenue number of 23,201 pounds. We're gonna keep deducting costs from that. And why that's an important number to know is because as a VAT registered business, when I'm looking at profit margins, I look at my revenue and all of my expenses, excluding VAT. That's just how you operate as a VAT registered business. So the next cost that I incurred last month were my Amazon selling fees. And there were three different fees here. The first fee was the Amazon referral fee. So Amazon's referral fee is essentially the sale commission that Amazon charges me every time I make a sale. And this ranges from between 13 and 15% depending on the product that I'm selling. And my referral fees last month came to a total of 3,996 pounds. The second Amazon fee that I incurred last month were my Amazon fulfillment fees. So the fulfillment fee is the fee that Amazon charges me to pick, pack, and ship my product to the customer for every sale that I made. And those fulfillment fees came to 5,988 pounds in total. The third and final Amazon selling fee that I incurred were Amazon storage fees. When you store stock at Amazon that you're selling via FBA, Amazon charges you a storage fee per cubic foot. And my storage fees for last month were 185 pounds which is really not too bad. So I actually work with a 3PL and I drip feed my stock into Amazon. So that really helps with those storage fees. So if you add up all of those fees together, my total Amazon selling fees for last month were 10,169 pounds, which if you divide that by my X VAT revenue of 23,201 pounds, uh, gives you 43.8%. So last month I spent around 44% of my revenue on Amazon selling fees, which is actually quite high. So typically this number is between 30 and 40%, um, but quite a few of the products that I sell are actually um, under 10 pounds, which means the cost of goods sold is lower than typical, but it means that the Amazon selling fees are a little bit higher than typical. Typically your Amazon selling fees will make up about 30 to 35% 
of your revenue. Okay, so now that we've talked about the Amazon selling fees, let's look at the second cost that I incurred last month, which was my Amazon PPC spend. So some of you watching this might think that Amazon PPC is only used during a product launch, but actually, if you're running a private label brand like me, you wanna be using Amazon PPC for the lifetime of your product. You just don't wanna turn it off. You optimize it over time, but you wanna have it continuously running because that's gonna do two main things. Number one, it's gonna allow you to maintain that organic keyword ranking that you gained during your launch. And number two, it's gonna allow you to discover and rank for new keywords that your product performs well for. So if you're a private label seller, you need to make sure that you're continuously running Amazon PPC for your products, just like I do. And that means that my spend for Amazon PPC last month came to 2,344 pounds with an ACOS of 16.56% which is really not too bad at all. I'm really happy. Over the years, I've tried so many different PPC strategies, some better than others, but the one I'm using at the moment, uh, which is the same PPC strategy that I teach to all of my students in my training program, is a strategy called a DRP strategy, a Discover Research Performance Strategy, which is a three to four campaign PPC strategy. And this PPC strategy has been working wonders for me. It's been doing really well, as you can see from those low ACOS numbers. But the important thing to understand is when you're looking at profits and profitability, ACOS means nothing. That's not a metric that you're interested in. The metric that we need to look at is something called TACOS. And TACOS stands for Total Advertising Cost of Sales. And the way that you work out TACOS is that you take your PPC spend and you divide it by your XVAT revenue. So we're gonna take 2,344 and divide that by 23,201 pounds and that gives us a tacos of 10.1%. So I'm spending around 10% of my revenue on Amazon advertising, Amazon PPC, and which is not too bad at all. I'm really happy with where that number's at. Um, that's about right, that's about where I want it to be. Now, just another quick tip, what I also do with all of my PPC spend is that I put all of my PPC spend through a 1% cashback credit card called Capital on Tap, and that allows me to earn 1% cashback on all of my PPC spend. Um, so for example, last month I spent £2,344 on PPC and I got £23 or thereabouts in cashback from Capital on Tap. So if you guys want to check them out, I'd highly recommend using a credit card for all your PPC spend. Unfortunately, you can't use a credit card for all the other Amazon selling fees. But yeah, you definitely want to be using that for your PPC spend. And if you sign up to Capital on Tap using the link in the description, you will also get £75 completely free. So make sure that you check that out. So if we add up all of my Amazon selling fees and my Amazon PPC spend, I'm spending around 54% of my revenue on Amazon fees as a total, uh, which, is, which is quite a lot. Um, but that is within the kind of usual range. Um, just to give a quick shout out as well, if you're trying to work out what your profit margins are, what your profit is, a really quick way to do this is to use the Helium 10 Profits tool. That's what I use, that's what I recommend all of my students use. And if you use the code LUCADAV10 or LUCADAV20, you can also get discounts off those subscriptions. So now that we've covered the Amazon selling fees, we've covered my Amazon PPC spend, the final cost that we need to look at is my cost of good sold. So this includes my, my product's purchase price, the shipping directly to the Amazon fulfillment centers, my import duties, and also some of my product prep and storage costs. So some of the products that I sell, I actually purchase in the UK. I send them to a UK based prep center, which preps them, they package them, and they put on the Amazon FN SKU barcode on them, and then they send them into Amazon for me. So my cost of goods sold for last month for all of those costs came to a total of £5,685, which works out to be about 24.5%. So let's say 25% of my revenue. So I would say that's less than typical. A typical kind of cost of goods sold is normally about 30% of your revenue. But like I said, some of the products I sell are under 10 pounds, which means my Amazon costs as a percentage are a little bit higher and my cost of goods sold as a percentage are a little bit lower. Okay, so now that we've looked at a full breakdown of all of the expenses, let's look at how much profit I actually made last month. So in terms of money coming into the business, I had 
1,201 pounds come into the business as XVAT revenue. Then in terms of expenses, if you total my Amazon selling fees, Amazon PPC fees and cost of goods sold, my total expenses last month came to 18,198 pounds. So if we minus those total expenses from the revenue, you get a total profit last month of 5,003 pounds, which is a 21.5% profit margin and 88% return on investment. So. For all of you that commented down below, how close were you to the actual profit margin? Did you hit it on the head? Um, did you expect a higher profit? Did you expect a lower profit? Really interested to know, so let me know down in the comments below. Am I happy with those numbers? Yeah, I'm really happy with those numbers. Um, the profit margin could be better, definitely. I'd prefer that profit margin to be closer to the 25% mark, but all in all, I'm, I'm really happy with, with that profit margin, the amount of profit that I'm making. For me, my goal this year is to launch new products, and number two, to try and improve that profit margin and get it closer to the 25% mark. Um, and it's gonna be difficult difficult to do that because I'm not going to be able to do that by lowering the Amazon fees because they, they're not going to change. If anything, they're actually going up in March, I believe. Um, so I'm not going to be able to improve the profit margin by reducing the Amazon fees. I'm not really going to be able to improve my tackles that much because my Amazon PPC campaigns are performing really well, probably the best they can at the moment. I'm not gonna be able to increase my selling price because that's gonna make me less competitive. So what I'm really gonna focus on to try and increase my profit margins is the cost of goods sold. So hopefully freight costs are coming down this year. And then also what I'm doing is I'm working with a company called Jing Sourcing to try and see if I can source my products for a cheaper price than I'm getting them at at the moment to try and help with that cost of goods sold, bring that down and improve my profit margins a little bit. So guys, hopefully you found this video interesting. Hopefully you got value out of it. Hopefully it's given you a more realistic expectations of what can actually be achieved with Amazon and what kind of profit margins realistically you are looking at. Now, Many of my students actually achieve much higher profit margins than this, um, but anything between kind of 20 and 30% after all of your costs is realistic. So as always guys, I hope you found this video useful. If you did, don't forget to give the video a like and also make sure that you are subscribed to the channel with that notification bell turned on so you never miss a video with lots more content coming just like this.